Hi, welcome back to the Recap Room. In today's video, we're going to be talking about an American war action film titled Fury. Spoilers ahead. The movie starts with Don War Daddy Collier, Boyd Bible Swan, Grady Kuhn Ass Travis, Trini Gordo Garcia, and Red fighting with the German Nazi soldiers. A furious battle ensues, and all the American soldiers get killed one by one. All of a sudden, Red is shot and killed. The crew carries Red and drives away on their E-8 tank, nicknamed Fury, as the only survivors of their battalion. They reach the camp where other American soldiers are. Before the crew can leave for another mission, they need someone to fill in for the position of Red. For this reason, Norman Ellison is sent to join them. Norman is much younger as compared to the rest of the men and has relatively no experience on the battlefield. For this reason, Dunt refuses to let Norman join them, but then Norman tells him that the higher-ups have ordered him to join their crew. Dunt continues questioning him and finds out that Norman was just a salesman and was made to join the war eight weeks ago. Dunn knows that the rest of his men will not accept Norman easily and tells him to go to their tent but avoid talking to anyone. When Norman reaches the tent, he's approached by the crew who begin to question him. They snatch his bag away and start remerging through his bag. They take his notebook despite protests from Norman. They ask him if he went to tank school, but Norman tells them that he has never even seen the inside of the tank. He is then sent to clean the inside of the tank and familiarize himself with fury. Once inside, he begins to wipe away the blood, but quickly rushes out of the tank and throws up. Don watches everything go down and decides that Norman is still naive and weak. He goes up to Norman and scolds him. He tells him that he needs to kill every German first or they will kill him. He hands Norman a rifle and the crew gets ready to depart once again. As they start moving ahead, they come across German civilians who have surrendered and are peacefully making their way out. Further down the forest, Norman spots two soldiers from Hitler Youth who have anti-tank weapons pointed at them. Norman chooses to stay quiet when he sees how young they are. All of a sudden, they attack the tank in front of them, successfully destroying the tank and killing everyone in it. Don quickly jumps into action and kills the two soldiers. He then furiously goes to Norman and begins to scold him as he should have warned the rest of the crew about the possible attack. Norman tells him that the only reason he did not take action was that they were just kids. The rest of the tanks then reach their destination, where Don meets with the battalion commander. The commander briefs Don that some of his soldiers are stuck on the front lines and they need help extracting them. Don then takes four tanks and soldiers with him to the front lines. Don sees smoke coming from an area and asks his men to proceed further. The Germans start attacking them, however, the Americans retaliate and end up destroying most of the German tanks and killing the German Nazi soldiers. Gordo asks Norman to shoot the bodies on the ground, but Norman tells him that they are already dead. Gordo tells him that he has no idea whether they are dead or not, and one of them could get up and shoot the tank or worse, kill someone. Norman starts to have a nervous breakdown, and he tells Gordo that he cannot kill people. Gordo assures him that he is aware killing people is not right, but they have to unless he wants to end up dead. The Americans manage to kill the Germans and take control of the area. Don tells Norman that the seat he is sitting in was occupied by Red, one of his bravest soldiers, and now Norman has not been helping and has hindered their mission so far. Norman apologizes and promises to do better the next time. Meanwhile, the troops manage to capture a German soldier dressed in an American uniform. The Nazi soldier is brought to Don, who then orders Norman to kill him. Norman hesitates and tells Don that he cannot kill him as it is wrong. This makes Don angry, who tells him that he is not here to judge what is right or wrong, he's only here to kill the Germans. Norman begs Don to not make him kill the soldier, but Don does not relent and forcefully makes Norman shoot the soldier dead. This traumatizes Norman and he curls up on the ground, shocked. Don kicks Norman and leaves. A few minutes later, Don commands the troops to move ahead. They reach a German town where they see bodies of Germans hanging who refuse to fight in the war. The town was seemingly empty. They encounter an old man and ask him where the German troops are hiding. He points at a building behind him and is immediately shot and killed before he can say much. The troops continue fighting and Norman manages to kill as well as he now realizes that he needs to kill to survive. 
the German troops surrendered, and Don tells them that they will be spending the night in this town. Norman tells Don that he found it easy to kill troops and even felt proud to be able to serve his country. Soon, Don and Norman enter a house where they come across a woman and her cousin, Emma. Don offers them food and asks them to make a meal for them. While Don cleans up, Norman comes across a piano and music sheets. He begins to play and befriends Emma. Don gives Norman permission to spend time with Emma while he sits in the living room. Emma and Norman begin to talk and quickly take a liking to each other as they have a lot in common. While they are eating, the rest of the crew joins Don and Norman and begins to mock Norman, making everyone uncomfortable at the table. They continue mocking despite Don's interruptions and this angers him. Before a fight can break out, a soldier arrives at the house and informs them that they have been assigned another mission and that they need to leave. Emma bids Norman goodbye and he is dragged away. Meanwhile, Don meets with the commanding officer who informs him that their troops have identified German troops approaching from the mountains and that Don and his crew need to safeguard the mountain because they have civilians and doctors there. He tells them that they need to reach the mountain before the Germans and scare them off. Don then asks the officer what kind of German troops are approaching and whether they have tanks or not, but the officer has no information about that. The troops prepare to leave when all of a sudden, the Germans drop bombs on the town. Everyone quickly takes shelter. As the bomb beam stops, Norman runs to find Emma. He sees that their house has been destroyed and Emma has been killed. He's mourning the loss of Emma when he's dragged away and taken to their tank. They take fury along with four other tanks ahead when they are suddenly attacked by a powerful German tank. The tank manages to destroy three of the American tanks and the only one left standing is Fury. Don and his crew manage to destroy the enemy tank and reach a new town when a bomb goes off near their tank and damages it. The tank is unable to move forward due to the damage it has sustained. Don asks Norman to keep an eye on the mountain for the German soldiers while the rest of the crew fixes it. Norman takes his gun to the top of the mountain and hides while keeping an eye out for the enemy troops. A few moments later, he spots a large number of troops coming and rushes to warn the rest of his crew. He warns Don that they are large in number but do not have tanks. The crew decides that the smart decision will be to leave the tank behind and save their lives as they cannot possibly fight off that many troops. Don tells them that they can go if they want to, but that he will be staying behind with fury. Everyone tries to reason with him that five men cannot win against an army of 300 troops, but Don insists on staying. Norman then tells Don that he will be staying with him, despite knowing that they might get killed. Don is unable to call for reinforcements, as the tank's radio has been destroyed as well. The rest of the crew then decides to stay in the tank as well. They quickly spread around corpses and light them up on fire to make it seem like everyone is dead and that the tank is destroyed. Inside the tank, the crew shares one last drink and nicknames Norman as the machine, showing that they have accepted him into their crew. The German soldiers soon arrive and one of the soldiers opens up the tank's hatch when Don shoots him dead. He manages to throw a grenade outside, killing some of the soldiers. Then, another furious battle ensues and with the help of Fury, the crew can kill a large of German troops. However, the Germans retaliate and kill the rest of the crew, except for Don and Norman. Norman asks Don if they should surrender. However, Don tells him that the Germans will torture him and subject him to a painful death. He tells Norman that he has been shot and that he will die soon. But Norman should escape the tank using the hatch at the bottom of the tank. Norman manages to escape when the Germans throw a grenade inside the tank, killing Don. The Germans begin searching for other American soldiers and one of them finds Norman hiding underneath the tank. He, however, does not say anything and lets Norman live. A few hours later, American troops arrive and find Norman alive. He is transported back to the base in an ambulance and deemed a hero for fighting in a horrific battle and managing to stay alive. And that was it for the recap guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell to get notified on every time we upload a new video.